I'm here with Letty and and Creston um, to tell their story about their their puppy uh, Tippy. Tippy's kind of the star of this this little podcast we're doing here today. Um, I I'm the owner of Inside Out Hyperbaric and Wellness, and just wanted to get their their story about um, their little dog and what's gone on the last year and a half, two years of this dog's life, and um, how they ended up at Inside Out Hyperbarics uh, to get some help for her. So. Her name is Tippy. She's about two years old now. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. And uh, you know, how did you find Tippy? How did you come across her in the beginning? Did you buy her from a pu- as a puppy or actually uh, my brother's Chihuahua had puppies and she was one of them. Ah, I see. So we got her for free. Nice. <laughs> the price was right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But she's a full bred Chihuahua. Um, the the mom and the dad are gotcha. Both Chihuahuas. Yeah, I mean, she looks as Chihuahua as Chihuahua gets. So. Yeah, fun little dog. Um, when when did you first notice that um, there was something maybe a little bit off with Tippy? Like it, when she first started showing symptoms, she she was a sweet little playful puppy. We could not see any anything off the bat. Like the first, what would you say a whole the, the whole first year? Yeah, the whole first year she was very energetic. She was always very loving. You know, always up in your face, licking your face, and. And uh, cool and cute, and yeah. we just couldn't resist her. And she started to kind of get the the first thing I noticed was the skin rash. Okay, and yeah. so um, we just kind of thought she's allergic to something, and got her some treatment for that. They just gave her um, an allergy shot. Yeah, gotcha. An allergy shot, and then one day out of the blue, we came back from visiting our our kids up north, and over the holidays, uh, it was. January. It was right after we got back. We noticed that her tail end when she would walk would go to one side. Mm. So it was um, like something weird with her or something like that. And she just progressively got worse where she couldn't even stand up. She she would try to jump up and she would miss. Uh, she started leaning against the wall target. just to stay up. I mean, yeah. her little tippy was tippy. Tippy, yeah. <laughs> oh. Because yeah. when, when you told me Tippy's name originally, when you were telling me what the symptoms were, I'm like, how did you guys know that, you know, this would be part of her path at some point? We didn't. You know, but so at that point, I mean, once she started exhibiting those types of symptoms, what did you guys, what did you guys do? Did you go to the veterinarian? Did you, yeah. w- what played out from there? Well, we scheduled with like a couple of different vet, vets um, at first and then, uh, we went to one, and they said, oh, it's an inner ear problem. We see this a lot in dogs. There's nothing you can do about it. Some vestibular we disease. Thought it, well, at first, we thought it was just vertigo. And so we took her there because she can – I mean, she would uh, lose her balance, and she would, like, roll over mm-hmm. because she would feel like her world was spinning. And so she was trying to yeah. stabilize herself, but she kept rolling over and over. Um so they gave us some antibiotics, I think. Yeah, it was an antibiotic, and then tried to we like clean her ear out, but and it didn't really do much. Right, and then so we took her to another one, um, and they actually did like a CAT scan, and they said, well, they looked at her ear, and they said, oh yeah, there's some stuff. And while she was out, they cleaned out her ear, and we noticed improvement mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. after that. And she was actually doing a little bit better. The, he put her on a different antibiotic because he said the other one wasn't going to do anything for this. And uh, she started doing a little better. And then they said they looked at the CAT scan, and that's when they noticed uh, the cancer was that mass. was like about the size of a dime in her brain. Oh, said. wow. Which um, is big because she's so small. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that is... That's so, a big tumor. So, so at that point, what was like the the prognosis? What did the vets say from there? I mean, what options did they give you? They gave us the option to go um, see. They uh, just gave us a referral. Go yeah, to a referral a to another oncologist. Yeah, we needed uh, to go get an Salt MRI. Lake. And we had to do an MRI, and they wanted to check her out. And then they said, "Well, we'll probably do surgery, but we don't know if it will do anything. It could." kill her if they did the surgery because it's in her brain mm-hmm. She's so or we weren't too excited about that because 
One is it was a lot of money, mm-hmm. and two we were really excited about losing Tippy so soon, and that was a real possibility. Yeah, and at that point, how old was she? I mean, she was about a year and a half. She, yeah, maybe not quite there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So just just, just still young, <laughs> still new, and then just yeah. given that type of uh, a diagnosis. And so how long did you guys sit on that idea of, you know, these are your your kind of your standard medical routes before you started looking at other things? Or were you looking for other things immediately after We were that? looking for other things immediately. Yeah, right yeah. Away. After, In fact, uh, it was then that my daughter recommended hyperbaric. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she started looking online and stuff. And we're like, well, do we want to spend 10 grand and buy one or... You know, it's just like, well, I don't know. <laughs> so, and then um, we found you and were able to bring Tippy in and start doing the treatments with uh, with you. Yeah. So I, I still remember the first day she came in and, and you guys were telling me the story and everything like that. And I was, you know, I had my fingers crossed that she would respond similar to the way other canines have in the past, which, you know, as we were talking out in the hall, that it's just... Animals respond, I mean, humans respond unbelievably well to hyperbarics, but for some reason, animals just, I mean, my family, we have racehorses, right? And they have hyperbaric chambers for racehorses too. And it is unbelievable how well they will respond to some hyperbaric oxygen therapy. I did not know that. That's a big chamber. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about something cool. There's a a place in Australia that designed it. So it looks like basically like you're walking your horse into a horse trailer, right? But it's got hydraulics on it. It's got TVs along the side. So it looks like it's moving in motion to the horse. They have wind blowing, the hydraulics on the... um, on the hyperbaric chamber moving just like it's going down the road. And the whole time the horse is getting hyperbaric oxygen therapy, but he just thinks he's going for a yeah, ride in the trailer. He's heading to uh, the next race. Yeah. Yeah, it's freaking wow, amazing. That's fascinating. Yeah, it's like a four or five million dollar chamber, but it oh. is uh, <laughs> it is oh, it is really cool. So so <gasps> when you brought Tippy in the first time, I mean we weren't, you know, making anything magic like that happen, but how did she respond? I mean, how was her first session? Do you remember like if she was nervous, how she behaved in there. So the first time she was in, she was in with me, and uh, the pressure you could tell she because she was trying to yeah. hide her head and and stuff Scratch like that. So it really ears. bothered. After it pressurized, uh, uh, about five minutes after it pressurized, mm-hmm. then she got to where she could lay down and and kind of relax and and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. But. Uh, yeah, and now we take her, and she just curls right up and sit, gets settled in, and oh, we're back. Yeah, it's nap time. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting because that oh, we were talking about the Russian hound that we had in uh, that had shattered her front leg, and the first time they brought her in because she was on so many pain meds and everything, she just kind of sat in the chamber with her owner and just had this little uh, like was kind of moaning a little oh. bit because she was scared and didn't know what it was, but then after about a week. Um, She turned that corner and she was heading straight for that chamber because she knew it was her chamber. And uh, what the owner started doing is uh, had the little mask, you know, that we normally put on humans. And she would just hold the mask in her hand and that Russian hound would just come and put her nose right in and lay down. Because dogs just intuitively know somehow that this is good for me even though it's a little bit scary and it just, the changes were amazing. So um, with Tippy, how, when did you first notice a change once you started hyperbarics? Do you remember if, if you're into it a week, two weeks, um, when did that first aha moment, like where you realized, Hey, this is really doing something for her. I I would say it was in between the two and three weeks there where, um, we noticed an improvement. Um, mm-hmm. She was all like, oh, I don't know if she's getting any better or if she's responding. Um, but um, we went to I was seeing little week, improvement because right? mm-hmm. I was looking for it, but I was seeing a little improvement. But uh, she was starting to not walk in circles everywhere. She was going That's in true. straight lines mm-hmm. and she was getting excited and um, – just feeling she just looked a lot more stable. She yeah. was starting to try to step up again on a curb or, you know, just the stair. 
Yeah. Because yeah. she was just timid and afraid to try any of those things. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe it was maybe a month in, she was just starting to play. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh our tippy's coming back. Yeah. She's starting to play with her toys and run around with our other dog in the house and she would go she would go and get her shark and you know, attack it. Attack her shark. <laughs> yeah, attack her shark. <laughs> well, I remember, I, I, and I'm not sure how uh, many sessions you guys were in at this point, but um, she always just kind of seemed at first to keep her head down and, and, and not really, you know, just kind of keep her eyes on the floor. But you brought her in one time, and it's probably three to four weeks in. And when I said her name, she looked right up at me, and she kept eye contact with me. Yeah. And that's the first mm-hmm. time that she'd actually looked at me in uh in all the times you guys have been bringing her in and so i knew right then and there that she was feeling you know markedly better at that point oh yeah well, it's... and you even pointed out one time i think when we came in because her eye will go a little squirrely mm-hmm. sometimes when we came out of the chamber she was steady and her eye wasn't yeah swirling and everything and she was more focused yeah yeah no it was just it's so cool and so fun to watch. And so how often were you guys coming? Were you coming three to four times a week? I don't remember your actual schedule. Yeah, it, at first we did like three times a week for the first three weeks, I think. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, then we bumped it down to two, two. times a week. And now uh, we're doing us every other week, but she goes every time. Both time, so, yeah. Yeah, because I couldn't keep track of you guys because one time you would bring her in, Chris, and the other time Letty would bring her in. and But you could just see this little dog coming back to life, literally, like, in front of our eyes. It was so, so fun to watch and, and, and so exciting. So yeah, I loved your staff, too. They were always so excited and cute with yeah, her. Yeah, they, oh, love, they love TV. seeing her. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we yep. we have lucked out and got an unbelievable staff. I mean, most of them, well, I shouldn't say most of them, but half of them were um, – patients of ours at one point in time. And so they've gone through and felt what hyperbarics has done for them. And they're very enthusiastic about sharing it with others. And yeah, you have your own experience and you definitely have the passion to. Yeah. Yeah. It, it changes everything. Others. So, uh, let's see, you got to look here real quick at some of these questions I wrote down. Um, so I guess you guys haven't had another cat scan, right. To check and see. No, we haven't What's happened to the tumor? I mean, it's probably just another expense to do that. It really is. It's we're, not cheap. We're, I'd we're, rather we're get more chamber sessions. We're curious at maybe doing it uh, <laughs> just to, to see. Uh, yeah. Right. Have a comparison. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, they've known since, you know, I think it was like 1907 that they discovered that tumors cannot grow in an oxygen-rich environment. So... Um, and there's been a lot in mainstream medicine, there's been a lot of back and forth that, you know, does hyperbarics help cancer grow? Does it, you know, stop it from growing? You know, where's the line drawn on that? But there's been some recent studies that show that, you know, uh, senescent cells, which are like the progenitor cells that allow cancer to spread all over the body, um, just in hyperbaric sessions, those, those uh, senescent cells go down by like 30%. So not only does it stop the tumors from growing um, out of control, it also stops the spread of cancer throughout the body. Oh, and so just there's amazing. just so much literature, and, and yet you you very rarely see anybody come in with, you know, cancer from their oncologist saying, hey, we want to add this to what we're doing, or we want to try this before we do, you know, these other things. And uh, but. No. They yeah, their protocol. Yeah, there's <laughs> protocols and things like that, and and in some you know instances it might not be that effective. Mm-hmm. But what I tell everybody about hyperbarics is there's going to be a lot of benefits other than the main thing that you're looking to do, and I can promise you it's not going to hurt you. Right. You're not going to go backwards. I mean, it's just. I mean, do you guys feel any different when you go in? Do you notice? Uh, I do. Yeah. 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 I, I I know that. That night, I always sleep better, and I yeah. I have trouble sleeping at night. Um, I always get a better rest on the day that I come in and that's and great. In there, and then uh, that restless and then I notice that I have a, a lot more energy um, the days following. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's one thing almost everybody says is number one, I sleep a lot better, and number two, I have so much more energy than I would normally have you know, without it. So, yeah. and I think little Tippy's kind of 
kind of the same way. <laughs> she's camera shy. Yeah, she's a little camera shy right now. <laughs> her nose is cold. She's trying to warm it yeah, up. Yeah, she'll stuff her nose in. Oh, she gets does. A little chilly. That's one thing she doesn't like. She doesn't like the cold. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I know in our office we keep it kind of cool, but you guys bring in blankets, and then we add a blanket for her as well and, yeah. you know, try to warm her up a little bit. But um, So, you know, moving forward and whatnot, if you guys ever encounter folks that, um, you know, that have pets that, you know, are – or in a bad way, would is hyperbaric something you guys would recommend? Yeah, I've, to I've, I've, I've actually told people at work, I'm yeah. like, uh, uh, they know that we're taking Tippy to her appointment. You know, yeah. I'm like I'm stepping out. I got a got a date with Tippy. Yeah, and how did <laughs> so, they how did they respond to that originally? How did that? Well, at first they uh, they were just like, "What's what is that?" You know, and and stuff like that. But uh, they're actually. Um, excited that yeah. it's actually working because i tell them at oh, work yeah. as well that it's it's working and and they're excited about that they've seen tippy before and mm -hmm. when she was bad right um it's heartbreaking oh i know yeah. i know because so, i mean it's a little puppy and i love her so much and i just i just felt hopeless yeah it's like oh, there what can i do I mean, it was, there is that huge expense if you want to go that route and there's no guarantee that that's even going to help. It could make things worse or, you know, take her life. And this was just, it was just an answer to prayer because we, she, her quality of life is so much more meaningful now and it, she has brought so much joy and we just love her. And so it really has been a blessing. Yeah. I mean, she can... Uh, before we had to put a towel on the floor for her to eat because she couldn't, she couldn't keep stay her balanced on she... the linoleum floor. Oh, okay. And now we don't have a towel there. She's got her. Balance. She's got the she strength and the balance mm -hmm. to do what she, she needs can, to do. She can eat, and uh, you know, she goes out. She runs around. She she doesn't need any help there. Uh, she is timid. She won't jump yet anymore. Okay. But she does go upstairs now, which she didn't before, and she'll put her paws up when she wants me to lift her up onto the the chair with me, and so she yeah. can sit with me and stuff like that, and say, "Hey, I'm right here." Yeah, you know? yeah. But day by day, she we've just seen improvement. That's so good. Yeah. Well, I'm gl I'm glad you guys brought her in. I mean, some people will, you know, they they read things or their doctor says it won't help, whatever, and. Like I said, for whatever reason, animals respond unbelievably well to hyperbrics. Now, they have chambers that they've designed just for dogs right. and cats. I mean, they're just little pod-looking things, very small. Um, but, you know, like like our chambers are the size, you know, humans come in. Sometimes two will get in at the same time. And to take a little dog like her in there, that's absolutely nothing. I mean, plenty of room. Yeah. And, it's a win-win. We both get the benefits. Yeah, and there you go. Have our little snuggle time. Uh, and then and she's... Not by herself as well. Right, yeah. yeah. So, she can be comforted. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. So it good. Is. So is it's there anything wonderful. else that you guys would like to add about, um, you know, coming into Inside Out or Tippy's story? Because I know we're going to get some videos and, and add those in, you know, some before and after hyperbarics yeah, type we stuff. we got to give you those. Those are – they're cute. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not that I can think of. I yeah. mean, just it, it has uh, – it has definitely improved her her life. I mean, I don't think she would be anywhere I don't think where she, she would is. Be here. I really don't. Yeah, she was that bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, when we start first started bringing her in, she we couldn't set her down. We couldn't do she anything. Just needed we had to hold pretty her much a hundred percent care. And it was so. we would take our lunches and go and check on her because. You know, we both work, and it was hard. Yeah. We knew she couldn't get around or do anything, so. Yeah. Well, she's doing well now, and it should continue on. It'd be really interesting if you guys end up do getting some more imagery just to see, you know, where it's at. I know it's a huge expense and um, whatever, but just where this little dog is from the first time that I laid eyes on her, you know, I just... Yeah, I'm grateful you, you brought can her see in. It. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. 
So Mallory, are there any other questions or different things that we should um, talk about, discuss that you can think of? Um, oh, not the top of my head. There was one other thing. Uh, you know how dogs, when they like shake their coat mm -hmm. and stuff like that, early on when she would do that, she would get all dizzy, dizzy and lose her balance and mm -hmm. everything. That's right. And even that's improved when she shakes. She just is steady. She, I mean, she's not perfect when she does it, but she's steady and she doesn't lose her balance anymore either when she shakes. And yeah. so she doesn't feel dizzy after uh, as much as she used to. Right. Yeah, and I still remember you got out of the chamber one time and you kind of set her down um, on the floor there. And she saw me and she started walking in this straight line towards me. Yeah. And, but I'd never seen her walk before, but not knowing anything about her, I would think that was a perfectly healthy little puppy. So. Oh, yeah. And she uh, before she would just walk around in circles and kind of, yep. you know, take a a path and but it'd be a whole Spirals. bunch of little circles to <laughs> to get to on a straight line yeah well, so i'm glad she's doing so much better and if you know if you guys don't have anything else to add we can just wrap it up but right. i appreciate you coming out spending some time bringing tippy You're with welcome. you yeah We're thanks for having us that we found you yeah i'm grateful you did too and mm -hmm. it's been fun to watch uh watch her progress like this because to anybody she looks like a perfectly healthy little dog right now so she's doing a yep. lot better. <laughs> awesome. Yes, she is. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for coming. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you at Hyperbaric soon. All right. Thank you. Thanks. thanks. Thank you so much for watching this episode today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to just shoot us an email or reach out to us in our DMs. Thank you. Have a nice day.